Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our presentation on Autodesk Vault for Civil 3D users. My name is Dave Young with Repro Products, and we're going to talk about how Vault can help you with Civil 3D. So the question today is, how do you manage your files? Use Vault or do you use a network file system? Most people are still stuck back on the Windows file server and just dump everything to a network drive. But it's got some limitations that Vault can help you get past. So the file system on your network, or on your computer even, doesn't have a lot of things Vault does. With Vault, you can have unlimited data fields. You can create custom properties for all your files that you add. It's not just limited to DWGs, though, anything. You have secure access all the way down to a file level, folder level, project level. All can be controlled through the Vault security permissions. These files can be checked in and out, meaning unless you check the file out, you can't make any changes to it. And based upon your security level, you might not be able to even check it out. So it does protect your files. Also keeps track of all the previous versions and revisions as well. Now the nice, nice thing about Vault that's not really present in most other document management systems is that Vault understands document cross-references in DWG files, whether they're linked to Excel, uh, other drawings, even Civil 3D data references. So Vault keeps track of all that. Um, some people use Outlook as a file manager. They get emails back and forth. They just stick, stick it in an inbox, put it into a public folder, something like that. Vault can help you with that side as well. Vault client looks very much like Microsoft Outlook. You have a very similar appearance same window layout, things like that. So it's kind of a combination of Outlook and Windows Explorer in how it behaves. So it's very easy, intuitive to learn. Searching capabilities in Vault, uh, just like in Outlook, you have a little field, you type in something, and it's going to search all the properties. It's going to search the content of the files. You can do Boolean searches. Uh, you can even go and specify certain fields to search, and you can create saved searches, like show me all the drawings that I have checked out, show me all the drawings that are in a work in progress state. Something like that can be saved and retrieved very quickly. We have CAD integration with Vault. Uh, with AutoCAD, you get the ribbon and the XREF dialog controls you can use. Inside of Civil 3D, you have uh, the ribbon, the XREF dialog box, and the prospector as well. It'll show up in the prospector underneath your data references. Vault integrates with Office. So you can track Word documents. There's a ribbon tab in Word and Excel, PowerPoint, and even Outlook to be able to track your Word documents. And when you track an email, it even saves the attachments with it and keeps them all linked together. And I mentioned the data fields. You can have unlimited data fields. Keep adding as many as you want to. Okay. In, you can edit multiple data fields at the same time in a spreadsheet-like format, kind of like Excel. You put in a value and just drag it down. Um, those fields can be linked to the document content. So where Vault property updates, you update, say, the, um, saved, uh, the date or the project number or the revision letter, something like that. You update it in Vault across multiple drawings. It will automatically update the title blocks as well. So the check-in and check-out process. You basically double-click a file inside a vault. It's a DWG. It's a word. It doesn't matter which. When you double-click it, it's going to open it. When it tries to open it, it's going to ask if you want to check it out if it's not already. And you can just automatically open up the application and start working in that. And when you open this file from Vault, it actually saves a local copy for you. You're not working off of the server copy. You're working off of something on your hard drive. So you can take this file, check it out, get a local copy on your hard drive automatically, and then leave the office. Take your laptop and go out in the field or go home for the weekend and work on this file from your local computer. When you get back, you check it back in. There's also the ability to do a workspace sync. So if you've got multiple people working on a project, you can say sync this and it will copy all the local, copy all the current versions local to your hard drive for you. 
On the project management side, you have the ability to track the status of multiple drawings. Okay, are they work in progress? Are they for review? Are they for construction? You get a list of how long they've been in that. Um, if you want to, you can even set up a engineering change order approval process if you wanted to, uh, and it will route things around. You can you can use that to control the the processing of these documents. You also have the ability to copy copy entire project folders. So if something needs to go uh, for some reason, you need a copy of it. It will make copies, update all X, XREF files. Uh, you can rename these files, change it to, you know, put it, append everything with a word archive or something like that. So you can create rules to do that with. You can also rename files within Vault. Now normally, think of an AutoCAD drawing that has XREF. If you rename one of those files as being referenced, it breaks it. Vault doesn't do that. Vault automatically repaths it. No matter where it's used. So imagine a company logo. Um, maybe you're using the you know call before you dig stamp as an XREF, something like that. It could update that in thousands of drawings for you automatically. So if it gets renamed or moved, it doesn't break it. It also prevents you from deleting any file that's in use. So if you have an XREF, you try to delete it, it's going to say no, it can't do it because it's being used by all these other drawings. You can do batch printing, uh, batch publishing, uh, basically select a bunch of files and say send to the printer. You have cloud co collaboration via Buzzsaw. Uh, this Autodesk is about to change this. They're switching over something, but for now you can do cloud collaboration with Buzzsaw. Unlimited web browser. There is a web version of this. There's normally the thick clients and the add-ins for the pro programs like AutoCAD and Civil 3D and Word. There's also a web browser that doesn't consume a license. You can go in there, you can view things, um, you can print them, you can forward links to them, all things, sorts of things like that. So not everybody in your office is going to need a seat of vault. This also allows people who don't have AutoCAD or Civil 3D to be able to view these files. Uh, Civil 3D workflow works very much like data shortcuts. Okay, you don't have to really learn a new process for any of this stuff. So when you have an alignment or a surface, when you check that file into Vault, it will automatically ask you if you want to add that data shortcut to your Vault. And you can reference it from there. I say thanks for participating. We haven't really shown you anything yet. Let's back up just a step, and let's see how this actually works. So in Vault, there is a server-side component to it, of course. Uh, there's a Vault server. It doesn't need to be a big, powerful, $20,000 enterprise-level server. If you've only got, you know, up to, say, 10 people using it, you can get by with a little, little teeny tiny uh, server. It doesn't have to be very powerful. We're actually running... Uh, a copy of server for demo purposes on a little four inch by four inch by two inch server or you know mini computer and it works just fine its limitations are data storage of course you can't add any extra hard drives to it but you can spread this out over multiple servers and have one for file storage one for database one for processing there's also a client component for this and I'll show you that one real quick looks a lot like this um, Let's get that out of the way for a second. Bring this back up. So here's my vault. It's going to ask me for a login. Now, we do have two different methods of authentication. You can have a vault account or a Windows account. So if you're already running a Windows domain with users, you can bring those users into vault and link to their account. So there's a single unified login. You don't have to worry and keep track of 10 different logins and passwords and things like that. You set this to go vault account. I'm going to log in instead just as a Vault account, as my administrator. Uh, we can actually have on the same server multiple var multiple Vaults. I got one called Infrastructure. I'm going to log into it. And we'll see what this looks like. You can already see it looks a lot like an Outlook interface 
we've got our Project Explorer over on the left. This is kind of your folder structure and outlook, and then the files over here on the right side. So if I start navigating this, just like you would in Windows Explorer, you see we've got a very nice logically arranged folder structure. And you can keep using the same folder structure you're used to. And we'll keep on drilling down in here. Let's find something. So let's go to utilities, and I see in here the list of my files. I've got some DOCs, and XLS, uh, PDFs. Vault is really document agnostic. You can have about any type of file in here you want to. Okay. So let's go just click on any one of these. And it's going to show me some basic information about it. It's going to show, number one is the history. Okay. There are two versions of this file. Click on the show all versions. It's going to show me each one. It's going to have a comment on what was done, if it's been entered. Okay. So click on the preview over here. It's going to give me a nice little preview of what this document looks like. There's not a whole lot to this one, but it is just a Word document. I can see it. And I didn't have to have Word to open this up. It's just there. Now, if we look at something like a um, AutoCAD drawing, that has a little bit more information to it. Let's go down here, just find something. Let's open up this one. Click on it. Take a look at it. At its history, it's only got one version, maybe not the best one. And I still own it. But what I do want to show you in here is this file might be used somewhere else. Okay. So this drawing I'm currently looking at, Style Development Corridor Design, is actually being used by Style Development Dash Subdivision. So I can, it, it maintains those links and it sees how everything's linked together through the XREF. I could also click over on the Uses tab, and it's going to show me if this drawing is being is actually using anything else. This one is not. But if I click on the Style Development Subdivision, we can see that it is actually using three other drawings here. Base Plan Surface, Base Plan, plan Topo, and Style Development Corridor Design. And if there's anything that those are using, the whole you know, XREF tree, we can, we can take a look at that and see what's in there. Uh, see if there's any history. Now, I got it somewhere in files that have you know 12, 13, 14 different versions, and you can quickly go back and see the whole history of these things. Now, I mentioned earlier the uh, security in here. Okay, you can have this on a file level, folder level, project level, or the entire vault. Those security rules are based upon drawing states. So these really don't have any states assigned to them yet, but let me just do that real quick grab these two drawings, and I can come up here and change the state of these drawings. Now notice this has no lifecycle state set. The lifecycle state basically is how do you want to handle this drawing inside a vault? So your DWG files might have to go through a different approval process than say your Word files in Excel. You know, if you save a Word file in here, or an Excel file is probably either work in progress or completed. Or maybe you don't even have a state for that. But your drawings might have something different. You might have to have you know, in design, under review for construction, uh, as built, you know, various things you could have in it. So you can have different sets of rules applied based upon what type of file it is. So the first thing we're gonna do is change the category of these. Those are model survey, that's fine. Those are survey drawings, that's good. Uh, this particular vault, these are all things that you can set up. Um, we can call it model infrastructure, we can call it an archive drawing, but I'm just gonna leave it as model survey. So nothing actually changed there, but let's go check on the change state. And I actually have to define, define the basic approval process because these didn't get added correctly. Now I can here have different states to these. It's work in progress, it's for review, approve, or archive. Let's just call them a work in progress for now. And we'll hit OK. So now my state column actually has something listed there. Um, and this will actually affect the behavior of the drawing. 
So maybe, just possibly, while a drawing is work in progress, you don't want, say, your admin assistant to come in here and be able to see these and copy and send them out to a client while it's a work in progress. You can have that set up so only your designers have the ability to see these files while they're a work in progress. When they go to for review, then the designers can see it and project managers possibly. And then finally, when they're for construction, everybody in the organization can see them. And you can set rules to do all sorts of different things. So let's take a look at something else in here. With all the files, there are a ton of system properties. You know, what's the category? When was it checked in? Um, who created it, what's the file extension, file size, things like that, typical document or file properties. But we also have the ability down here below this to add user-defined properties. So I've got author, comments, I've got one called county. Maybe you want to, if you do a lot of surveys that get recorded, maybe you want to create uh, uh, properties for book and page. Where is it recorded? Uh, what county is it in? Um, what type of survey is it? You know, mortgage surveys, Alta surveys, a boundary, is it for construction? Anything that you can imagine, you can create a category for, or not category, a property for. These properties can be picked from a list, they can be type in, they can be numbers, yes, no, all sorts of different things they could be. And you can now search for this information. So imagine you have a bunch of old paper drawings laying around. You scan them in and you put them on your computer, but how do you find information about it except based upon file name? Well, through Vault, you can attach properties to files whether they're, they have a, the ability to have those properties. So if, if I open up a TIFF image just in regular Windows Explorer, I can't really change anything about it. And I can't search for you know the page number or the title or sheet title or anything like that. But I could always come in here and edit these properties and add whatever I want to. So let's say I wanted to add, you know, append the uh, or update the author and county for both of these drawings. I simply select both drawings. I pick the two fields I want to update or 10 fields. Let's do project number as well. I'm going to click on the edit the properties button. So over here, I'm going to say the author is DEY, county is Cobb County. Project number is one, two, three, four, five. Not too original there, am I? Well, let's grab these fields. And I want to copy those to multiple drawings. I can just do a control C and control V and paste it. I could also type something in here. Let's say Forsyth County. I want to copy that to multiple fields. I can use the drag down button to do that as well. So I'm going to update these properties. Okay, it's going to take just a few seconds to do that. And for some reason, I couldn't update the county information, but that's okay. We we'll, should see if these others have been updated as well. Now, it's very possible to set this up so that when you change the author and the project number and the county and the sheet title and page number or whatever else you have, they will automatically update the title blocks in your drawings. So imagine being able to change the revision number on a 300-page construction document set. You don't want to have to open up 300 drawings to do that. You can just come in through here, very much like uh, the Sheet Set Manager in AutoCAD, and you can change the properties in here. It will go update those 300 drawings for you. Now, we have the ability to search data in these property fields as well. So if I got a file out there somewhere, I don't know where it is. I'm just going up to the top level Project Explorer. And over here, I have a search button. And I can just type in a search field. I'm going to type in Boone. And Boone doesn't get me back. Let's search for, let's search for DEY. That got me 13 drawings. Okay. And let's see if, where that information shows up. Here I have DEY for designer. We'll just scroll down. Do this list so far. DEY is designer on most of those. Oh, 
here on these last two, we see the DEY is actually in the author field. So this field, this searches across multiple drawings. Now it's not just searching the properties of something, we actually have the ability to search the content of something as well. So any file that's in there, we can search it. So if I just search the word schedule, try doing this in Windows Explorer, I search for the word schedule, what am I gonna get? Yeah, I'm gonna get anything that has schedule in the file name. But here, I've come up with 56 objects, drawings, PowerPoints, Word, Excel, PDFs, that contain the word schedule somewhere in them. So, you know, Brigadoon Construction Execution Plan Checklist, there's no schedule in that, in that title of that file. It's not in the user-defined or system properties, but I bet if I open it up, I just double clicked it, it's gonna ask me, do I want to check it out? No, I just wanna read it, so I'm gonna say no. It's gonna automatically open up Word for me, or Excel, sorry. And somewhere in this document is the word schedule. Let's just hit a control F, see if we can find schedule. Uh, I want to look in values instead of formulas. Let's find the next one. And somewhere it highlighted it for me. Not sure where, but it's in there somewhere. Let me just get over here where there's the word schedules. Okay. So the ability to search the content of these things is pretty impressive. If you can put it into Vault and Autodesk, or the Windows server side can index it, Vault will understand it. Vault can search for it and get that data back. Now, let's take a look how this looks in the actual application. Let's go back here to the, just a document file. Now, before I said, do I want to check it out? No, this time I do. I want to check it out because I want to make a change to it. I'm not sure what this document says, but We'll uh, drag it over here to the proper window. And here's this document. It looks like it's in a edit mode. Let's change that. Whoops. Somewhere my windows is throwing this into the wrong mode. Edit document, there we go. Now I'm in Word, and I can make some changes to this. Okay, what sort of changes do I want to make? Something real simple we can see. Let's just take the table of contents. Um, well, it's not letting me make any changes right now. Let's log in real quick. Something about the way that opened isn't quite right. We log into Vault. Still not able to make changes. That's just kind of weird. Let's try to close that out and try it again real quick. Double click on it. Tools, view, edit documents. And that is still locked. That's just a weird document. Oh, I don't have permissions for it. Um, that's a document level thing. Let's find something else. You know what? I just got something over here. Let's check it in real quick. Here I have a um, handout from Autodesk University. I have an Autodesk Vault tab inside of Word. I'm simply going to make sure that I'm logged in. So login is grayed out. I'm already logged into it. I can check this file in. It's going to ask where do I want to save it inside the Vault. Let's go put this in, say, maybe the admin folder under... Reference. Let's put it under documentations. And so we do that, and I'm going to hit OK. And that file is now going to be checked into Vault. If I want to, I can keep it checked out. I can add some comments. We'll just do something like that. Hit OK. Now it says I'm not working on the latest version of it. Basically, I need to check it out and back in. So um, do I want to delete it from its original location? No, I do not. This is actually a live working document. But I'm working on an old, not the right copy. So I'm going to close that. Now, back in Vault, I saved that. Over here under Admin, Documentation, there is that file that I was working on. 
But notice it gave it a little different icon than most everything else. It knows DOC files, XLS, PPTs. Those are all Office documents, and it gives it a category of that, which means it has different behaviors potentially. Let's just open this up, check it out. Okay, so now I'm working on a copy from Vault. And let's do something visible here. Let's just take that and make it red. Let's grab that box right there and let's uh, highlight the text in yellow, something crazy. And then back in my Autodesk Vault tab, I'm going to log in real quick. You can say automatically log in, so you don't have to do this every single time. So now we're logged in. I can check that document back in. And I'm going to say give it a comment. Just change text colors. That's good enough. And hit OK. That's all we got to do. Now this is put back in Vault. It opens it up again as a read-only copy, so I can see where I left off. But if I go back over here to my Vault, I'm going to hit F5 to refresh it. And I see now I'm working on ver two different versions. If I want to show all the versions, I see the initial add. And then I see another version where it changed the text colors. And we can look at the preview on each of these. Version 1 looks like this. I'm sorry, that is... Um, Revision 1, and let's see, I want to go back to my history, let's take a look at the other version. This is Revision 1 as well, but version, this is Version 1, Version 2 at the top. Let's take a preview of that first one. Um, there we go. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong spot. Now, something about the permissions are not letting me see the prior versions. That may be a good thing. That may be desirable behavior. And obviously, it is in this vault, because I can't see the prior ones, because that's the way it was set up. Not a big deal. We can do all sorts of fun things like that. Um, what else? What, I mentioned searching. Let's go take a look at the capabilities of searching. Not only do we have the ability to search right here, but we can create our own search. Let's go find something like, show me all the documents that were checked out by administrator. I'm going to click Add and then Find. We'll see if the administrator, yep, the administrator has two files checked out. So I would then probably want to come in here and save this. Let's go up to File. Let's do a Save Search As. And I've already got something set up, so I'm just going to pretend I typed something in there. Now, that Save Search is very easy to get back to. Over here on the left-hand side navigation pane, we have my search folders. I have a search called Files I Have Checked Out. I click on it, and there are those two files I have checked out. Notice these two files are bright blue text, bold text. Uh, it lets me know that they're checked out to me. We also, let's just go take a look at anything else. Let's go uh, the Brigadoon folder. Sure, we can find something in here. These files are not checked out to me. In fact, they're not checked out to anybody, so they just look like a little regular plain text. If someone else has a file checked out, it will be grayed and has a line through it, let me know that someone else has it checked out. And I can actually add a column over here that shows when they were last checked out, who has it checked out, and the checked out by would have a value in it. So very, very customizable these displays are. And I'll see how this actually works in, say, an AutoCAD drawing. Let's go find us a DWG. Actually, I want to search not there. Let's go take a look at, um, I think I've got one under projects, under roads, Alatina connector. Now, so here's a file that's checked out to somebody else. It's checked out to a user called reviewer. I, I can see this file. I can double click on it and open it, but it didn't ask me if I wanted to 
edit it. Didn't ask me much of anything. It's just in here. And I should not be able to make any changes to this, but I can still see it. Now, I'm not seeing the changes as the user makes them because they're stored on his local hard drive. But as soon as he checks it back in, I would be able to see the most current version. So I said, let's go find another one out of there. I think under source drawings. Nope, not there. Let's go back real quick. Production drawings. Let's take a look at this style development subdivision. Just open it up. Now, this one's going to ask me, do I want to check it out? Because I can. If I do want to check it out, I'm going to say yes. It's going to open it up. It's going to be allow me to make changes to it. And I get this drawing. Now, what else do I get with that? Well, under my prospector, I see I've got under surfaces, I have two data reference surfaces. Over here, I have uh, a couple of center line alignments that have been referenced in. And if I come down to my data shortcuts, it's going to show me these as well. But more importantly, if I actually log into Vault, I haven't done that yet. Let's go to my Autodesk Vault add-in. Where is my Autodesk Vault ribbon tab? Well, that's interesting. I don't have an Autodesk Vault ribbon tab in my Civil 3D right now. We'll pretend there's one there. Um, let's see if I can, I can log it into Vault this way. Right-click on it in the prospector. We'll log into that same vault. Okay, now we're working. So I still have my data shortcut section. I can actually ignore that. But I'm going to click on my projects. And it shows me all the Civil 3D projects in there. It's another way of doing things. So here I have the uh, FMC staking, and I have under the projects folder some more subfolders, but under the roads, Subfolder, I have a project called Alatuna Connector. Let's keep expanding that out a little bit, and I can see, you know, the alignments. Let's go take a look at the centerline alignments in this project. A couple of these are grayed out, means that someone else has them checked out. Uh, I can take a look at any surfaces in here. We have existing ground, finished ground, and proposed pond one. So I can basically browse through the data structure. Now, remember, these are they're essentially data references just stored within Vault. And we'll take a look at my drawings up here. And this is actually the typical folder structure you would use for any project. You can use your own templates for when setting up a new project, just like you do with the Civil 3D uh, data references. So we can go find uh, another drawing out of here and open it up if we want to. So if I make a change to one of these, um, well, actually I can't do any of that. Let's grab one of these alignments up here real quick. I'm going to right click on it and say open the source drawing for it. Now I have this source drawing on my computer. Why? Because I downloaded the parent from Vault. So when I check out a file from Vault, it gets not only that file that I double clicked on and make a local copy, it will get anything that file uses and give me a local copy. So it's very quick to open these. I'm not opening them over the network, not opening them up to a VPN connection. They're all coming straight out of my hard drive. So I, if I need to make a change to this, I can simply grab that alignment, uh, which is actually being referenced from somewhere else as well. Um, actually, I'm in the wrong drawing still, sorry. Here is my source drawing. I can grab that alignment now, make a change to it, just drag it out here. It's going to rebuild my corridor, rebuild all the surfaces. Okay, um, let's go just do some basic data up here. Those all look up to date. Let's do corridors. Oop, got to rebuild that one. Okay, there we go. So now my corridor updated. If I'm done with this, I'm going to double, I'm going to close it to ask me do I want to save it, say yes. Okay. 
Now, it says my data shortcuts may have changed. I'll synchronize those. We should get all that data back in here. So here's that new alignment over here now. Now, I did that all through Vault. If I have a new drawing and check it in, it will ask me, do I want to check in all of the associated files that go with it? I can do that very easily. Uh, check in all of the um, data references. So if I've got 10 different surfaces, I really only want to share out the final. I want to check it in, I'll say, share the final surface only. Now, earlier I mentioned that there is a web client available as well. So the way licensing for Vault works is sort of a server-based or Autodesk login-based system. So you have to have a login for anybody that wants to access the data in Vault and make changes to it. You need a you need to purchase a license. But it's not they are concurrent licenses. It's just it's not necessarily a named user. So you can buy a site license for multi-user license, kind of like a network license. So you got 10 people using it, maybe only six of those at any one time need to be updating Vault. That includes checking files in or checking them out, updating the properties or editing the files themselves. Those would all require a license. But maybe you've got some people in your office that just don't need a license. They're not going to change anything in Vault. They're just going to go in there and search for documents, review documents, um, maybe just in charge of printing documents. They don't, don't necessarily need a license. There is a free, comes with it, client that runs in a web browser. So here we are, Autodesk Vault through a web browser, just a standard URL you can send a shortcut to. Let's go ahead and sign in. Notice we also have the exact same authentication, Vault account or Windows account. Let's log in here as reviewer instead. I'm going to get a totally different set of results as a reviewer because of the life cycles and uh, states of these drawings or these files. So maybe as a reviewer, I only see documents marked for review. I might not find everything that's a work in progress. Let's just kind of browse down through here. Project Explorer, we see the same data. Let's go to Engineering. Projects, roads, Alatuna connector. Okay. So I'm seeing the base plan surface drawing, uh, production drawings. Uh, I can see that these are checked out. Subdivisions checked out to somebody else. So it's checked out by the administrator, which is what I have in Civil 3D. And it's a work in progress, and I can still see this because of the way this, these rules are set up. Now, it might be set up so that, you know, Unless it's set to for construction or something like that, you can't see it. But let's just keep diving down here. Let's take a look at corridor design. So corridor design, um, we, get, we get all the properties of it, including our user-defined properties. If I want to see what this looks like, I can simply click on the preview button, a little magnifying glass. It's going to show me this. Now, this is not a very useful icon, or uh, it's basically a thumbnail. You can't really do much with this. Uh, there is um, something that's not been updated yet on this. This was a file that was just checked in uh, not too long ago. Very possible the preview's not been updated yet. I can fix that. Uh, let's go do that real quick. This is the style development corridor design. Let's find that over here in Vault. Now in Vault, I'm getting a different, I'm getting a say corridor design. Yeah, I'm not getting a preview of that particular one for some reason. It's just not coming up right. So I'm I want to over here. Ah, because it's checked out. That's why. Is it checked out? Nope, it's not. Anyway, I want to come over here real quick and go to uh, update the view for it. I'm going to say update locally. What it's going to do is basically open the file, rebuild the preview for it. It creates a DWF. You can't really see the DWF itself, but it creates a DWF for preview purposes and printing purposes. Let's just go ahead and queue an update instead. So basically, what it's doing is 
telling the server to go regenerate that file, regenerate the preview for it. And that may take anywhere from a few minutes to 20 minutes, depending upon your computer, uh, unless you're not your computer, your server, and how you have that set up. You can set to, set to check very often or just randomly check. Let's real quick just check the job queue. There's no, nothing in here. So some one of my job processors has already picked this up and processed that. So that should mean, go back to here, corridor design, let's hit an F5 on that, just refresh that page. Now I click on it and I get a, it's just gonna load up design review for me. Now, this computer is not showing me all the civil 3D objects. That is because which, the job processor needs to have Civil 3D installed on it to actually do this. Mine currently does not. Uh, any AutoCAD elements in here would be updated. Okay. Um, but unfortunately, let's go to another page. We'll see if it looks like something. Well, okay, yeah. At least I can see a title block on this one page. So this, this title block has been regenerated. I can see it and then browse around on it. So that maybe wasn't the best example, um, but we can at least see what's going on here. We can see all the properties of these. Um, we have search capabilities in here as well, just like we do, uh, just like we do in the regular thick client, except this is a free. Okay? You can't check out files from here. You can't edit the properties. It's just sort of a free browser to go browse your vault. Let's close that up. Um, oh, I think I said you could track emails in Civil 3D. So here's a um, email, given the updates. What I'm gonna do here is go to the Autodesk Vault tab. I'm going to make sure I'm logged into Vault and then check in this email. Okay, where do I want to, what do I want to check in? I want to check in the email itself and the associated attachments. So they're gonna stay with it. Now, where do I want to put it? I'm going to click my target location in Vault. Let's put it under Admin uh, Contracts. Hit OK. And we'll hit OK again. So what did that do for me? If I come back over here to Vault, go to Contracts. There's that email. And the file that goes with it. So I don't want to actually check this. I just want to see what it looks like. It really just opens that email back up for me. If I were to click on and say uses, it's going to show me that it has an attachment to, that goes with it. So the integration with AutoCAD, Civil 3D, Revit, Inventor, uh, most Autodesk products for that matter, uh, is pretty sweet. It also integrates with all the Office stuff. So you have a lot of capabilities there. Now, I haven't really gone into server-side components, uh, how to set any of this stuff. That's way beyond the scope of this. But just be aware that for Civil 3D users, if you're using data shortcuts, there's really not much of a change. You're going to use the projects folder over here instead of the data shortcuts folder. It just kind of moves where it puts the stuff. Now, the good thing about using Vault for this, you don't have to worry about all those little pesky XML files floating around that you know, act as your data shortcuts. You want to make sure you have a, a shortcuts folder. Uh, you just create a new project in Vault, automatically creates all those links you need as you check files in and out. Okay, so at that point, this is a high level discussion. I, I realize that I haven't gone into much detail on anything, but that's okay. I'm gonna open this up for any questions. Questions about how Vault works, questions about Civil 3D, the integration, Word, Office, server side, server requirements, anything like that. If you've got any questions, now's the time to ask them. And for the uh, recording, I'm actually going to stop this and uh, say thank you for watching.